So hello, this video lesson is all about the classifications of matter and I am recording this video using Zoom. Okay, and I will now share my screen. Okay, so the topic for this lesson video is classifications of matter. So classifications of matter, so we have the matter and it is divided into two major classifications. Those are pure substances and mixtures. So uh, let us first focus on pure substances wherein pure substances are also divided into two subclassifications. We have the elements and compounds and then we also have different types of elements and compounds. So for elements, we have these three. We have the metals, the nonmetals, and the metalloids. For compounds, we have the two major types of compounds basically are organic compounds and inorganic compounds. And I will also be discussing these three different compounds, the acid, salt, and base. And for the mixtures, we have homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures. So this is the three diagram of the classifications of matter. So let us now discuss the classifications of matter beginning with pure substance. These are substances composed of one kind of element or a compound. So again, pure substance has two subclassifications. The first one, is the element. An element is a one kind atom. So everything that you see in the periodic table, they are all different kinds of elements like oxygen with a chemical symbol of O and carbon with a chemical symbol of H, uh, C rather, and hydrogen with a chemical symbol of H. And then we have the compound. So compound is a pure substance composed of two or more different elements. So for example, water. Water is a substance that has a chemical symbol of H2O. So water is composed of two different elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Sodium chloride or table salt composed of sodium and chlorine. So you can consider it as a compound. And then we also have calcium sulfate, CaSO4. So it is a compound made up of three different elements, calcium, sulfur, and oxygen. Now, let's focus first on elements. So the first one is the metal. Metal can conduct electricity and heat. So in our periodic table of elements, majority are metals. And these are on the left side of the periodic table. Divide, uh, by the way, the periodic table is divided into two different parts, the left part and the right part. It is actually divided by a stair-like uh, formation of the metalloid. So if you're going to look at your periodic table, there is a stair-like formation of elements starting with boron. So it uh, boron is a metalloid. So the left side of the periodic table are all metals. So for example, lithium, magnesium, and iron, they are metals. So this one is an example of metal. The second one on the right side of the periodic table are the non-metals. So they are, they are the elements that do not conduct electricity and heat. Opposite to metal, so uh, heat cannot flow as well as electricity. And then by the way, for metals, uh, they appear or they occur in solid. So they are all solid except for mercury which is liquid at room temperature. By the way, uh, among metals uh, on the left side of the periodic table, hydrogen is an, uh, is an exemption because hydrogen is a non-metal and it, uh, it is actually a gas. So for non-metal elements, they occur in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. So for example, sulfur as well as carbon, they are both non-metal elements, and at the same time, they are solid. So for bromine and iodine, 
they occur as liquids at room temperature. So for oxygen and hydrogen, they are gases. So this is an example of sulfur, a yellow solid substance. So for metalloids, they are elements that can have properties of a metal and non-metal. So they are also known as semiconductor. Uh, they are just simply processed to become a substance that can have a property of metal, or you can also process them, these metalloids for it to have a prop to, for it to have properties like non-metals. And now we proceed with, or so boron is an example of a metalloid. Compounds. Compounds are, again, these are pure substances composed of two or more elements like water. So organic compound is mainly composed of carbon and hydrogen. So for example, methane gas, CH4, it is the simplest form among organic compounds composed of carbon and four hydrogen atoms. So when we say organic compounds, they can, the main composition is carbon and hydrogen. Sometimes they are called hydrocarbons in organic chemistry. And they, uh, they, their basic characteristic is that they, compo they decompose. So another organic compound is C4H10 or butane. So these are examples of organic compounds like fruits. So for inorganic compounds, they are, com uh, they are compounds wherein their main compositions are not, or the main composition is not carbon. So for example, table salt, sodium chloride, as well as ferrosulfate, wherein, as you can see in their chemical formula, they do not contain carbon. So this is an example of ferrous sulfate. And then we also have acids. They are substance or compounds that are hydrogen cont containing electrolytes that yield hydrogen atom ions in aqueous solution. So meaning every time that they are dissolved in water, they produce hydrogen ions. So for example, you have a binary acid, hydrochloric acid, and a ternary acid, sulfuric acid. You should, uh, more, uh, acids, uh, the chemical formula for acids, they always have the hydrogen as the first element. So these are the hydrochloric acid and the sulfuric acid. So for base, it's the counterpart of acid. They are compounds that produces hydrogen ions when dissolved in water or OH negative. So they are the ones that neutralizes acid when they react to each other. So Examples of bases are NaOH or sodium hydroxide and o, uh, MgOH2, magnesium hydroxide. So in chemical formula for bases, they always have this OH or the hydroxide. So this is an example of a base. This is a sodium, these are sodium hydroxide pellets. So usually for them to react, they must be dissolved first in water. Salts are neutral substances formed from the combination of equivalent concentrations of an acid and a base. So that means they are produced by uh, they are produced by the reaction between acid and base, which we call neutralization. So neutralization is the reaction between acid and base that produces salt. But aside from salt, in the reaction between acid and base a byproduct is also formed, which is water. So every time there is neutralization happening, the acid and base produces two products, the salt and water. So in our equation here, uh, chemical reaction here, when hydrochloric acid combines with sodium hydroxide, it they form sodium chloride as the salt and the byproduct of water. Let us now proceed with mixtures. So mixtures are combinations of two or more pure substances, either a combination of element and compound or compound plus another compound. So we have two major subclassifications of mixtures. We have the homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixture. So homogeneous mixtures sometimes sometimes also known as solution for some homogeneous mixtures, 
particles are broken down into molecular dimensions and miscible, meaning they are uniform in appearance. So for example, a homogeneous mixture is an alcohol solution. So when alcohol is dissolved in water, you cannot anymore identify which is the alcohol and which is water because they are miscible or uniform in appearance. So isopropyl alcohol in commercial uh, available commercially, so it is 70% solution. That means it is a combination or a mixture of pure alcohol, 70%, and the remaining 30% is made up of water. For heterogeneous mixture, simply they are immiscible mixture. So that means if you're going to combine two substances, you can, you can still identify which is which. So if you combine compound A and compound B, if you mix them still, you can see by their appearance which is substance A and which is substance B. So for example, we have salt and pepper. So if we combine them, you form a heterogeneous mixture. So that's it for this lesson video. Thank you for watching and see you again next time.